it's a great day. It's a time of joy. It's a time of celebration. Uh, we, even though we have some little technical issues, but we've been able to overcome that. So I'm happy to say happy Easter to every one of you. It shall be an Easter you will live to remember in the name of Jesus. There is no better time to celebrate Easter than now. We need the power of resurrection in our lives more than ever before. And that is what we are believing God for today, that the power of resurrection will come upon us, each and every one of us, in the mighty name of Jesus. All right, let me make sure that I'm not on mute. I'm not on mute. Uh, and uh, my, my volume is up. Can, never, can you hear me? Can everybody hear me? Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Uh, that's, that's those of you on Zoom. Uh, those of you on YouTube and uh, Facebook, can you hear me? All right, um, since those of you on YouTube can hear me, I mean on Zoom can hear me, then it's not from my end. I believe we will sort it out uh, for the guys watching on YouTube and, and Facebook. So I'm gonna pray now and then we're gonna get into the word of God um, uh, right away. So let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We glorify you. We magnify you. Thank you for a day like this that we are remembering the great sacrifice you made on our behalf to come to this earth and to go to the cross for our sin, to die and to rise again, to give hope to our faith. We are grateful, the God of heaven and earth. And as we go into your word this time and this moment, we ask that you will empower your word and let the grace and the anointing in your word permeate the atmosphere and reach each and every one of us at our point of need, wherever we may be right now. You are not limited by space. You are not limited by distance. Natural elements cannot obstruct the flow of your power. And so we release the power of the Holy Spirit through the media, atmosphere, the air, the wind, the sound. We release the anointing of the Holy Spirit to deliver full capacity of the power of resurrection to everyone watching, listening, connected in one way or the other in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your holy name. Let none of us go back the same way we come. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Praise the Lord. All right, so I'm going to share my screen so that you can um, see the PowerPoint that I want to share with us uh, that I'm teaching from uh, this morning. <clears throat> All right, I want to start a series today, uh, which is titled The Power to Rise. The Power to Rise. There is a power required for rising. Nobody just wake up in life and begin to rise. If it happens that way, then everybody in life will have gotten to the top. But there is a power required to rise. Matthew 28, 6 will be our anchor scripture. Matthew 28, 6, it says, He is not here for his reason, as he said. Come and see the place where the Lord lay. Now, the background to this story is 
a story that we are all very familiar with, which is the story of the persecution, the crucifixion, and the death of Jesus Christ. And he was laid in the tomb, of course, blocked and even watched over. So nobody expected him to rise out of that situation and out of that circumstance. Ordinarily, it, it is not possible to rise. And the experience of Jesus in the tomb is the experience of people in life today. All things being equal, life does not wish that you rise. Circumstance does not, does not create an enabling environment for you to rise. There is an extra ability. There is a supernatural power. There is an, an enablement that must be in place for you to be able to rise in life. The resurrection that took place, which is what we are referring to today, we're talking about it, we are joyful about it, we're celebrating, you know, about that incident. Uh, uh, there are three stages of rising that took place in resurrection, which I want to highlight uh, this morning and which we're going to be praying about. Uh, the first thing is that, you know, Jesus rose from death back to life. I want you to understand that as at the time they left him, his body in the tomb and sealed the tomb and the soldiers were watching over the tomb. As at that time, Jesus in the physical was dead. His body was out of life. There was no life in his body. He was dead. So from that state to the state of coming out of the tomb, there are three things that happen. Number one, he rose from death back to life, though he was still in the grave. Before anyone can come out of the grave, before the dead can come out of the grave, the dead must come back to life first. So there was a rising from the death position to a position of life where he had life back in him. That was the first step of rising. Then the second step of rising is that now that you are back to life, you now need to come out of the grave. Don't forget that the grave was sealed and there were soldiers watching over the grave. So it's one thing to come back to life, but then you are still in the grave that is sealed and soldiers are watching over it. So ordinarily you cannot come out of that grave on your own accord, by your own power. So the first, the first step of divine intervention, the first step of the that way of, of, of the you know uh, the uh, you know the you know introduction of the power to rise, the first assignment the power to rise will carry out in the life of Jesus in the tomb is, is to bring him back to life from the position of deadness. Now, but the second stage of the power to rise is to come out of the grave that is sealed and watched over by soldiers. That's the second stage of rising. Now, the, the third stage of rising that happened to Jesus at resurrection is that he came back to life, yes. He came out of the grave, yes but he need to ascend up to the Father. Now, so there was need for him to rise up against the force of gravity. Now, there's no human being that can rise up against the force of gravity on his own accord. It does not happen. You either do that, maybe you are in an elevator or you are in an aircraft or something of some sort that will take you up against gravity because the force of gravity is real. The force of gravity is, 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 is a force that exerts on every human being. So this three level of rising, no man can attain it on his own accord. There is a power required to make that happen. There is nobody that dies that can of his own accord come back to life. 
if that is if that is possible many people who are dead will be back to life you know still living normal among us no man can bring him him or herself back to life there is a power required for that to happen number two there is no living person that is in the grave and the grave is sealed and soldiers are watching over it no man in that circumstance can of his own accord come out of that grave there is need for a power to bring him out of the grave and somebody that is now out of the grave no such person can on his own accord rise up against the force of gravity into the sky and these are the three things that happen to jesus and these are the three elements of the power of resurrection these are the three potentials of the power of resurrection these are the three things that the power of resurrection can do in the life of a man if you can tap into it there are certain things remember we started sharing you know at the beginning of this year about the tripartite nature of man you know i said that you are you know you are um, you are a spirit being remember that and you live in a body and you have a soul you are a spirit being you are a spirit you live in a body and you have a soul now at these three levels a three dimension of our existence we can experience the power of resurrection i want you to know that in the spirit it is possible to die and be buried in the realm of the spirit it is also possible in the soul for a person to die and even be buried it's also possible as, as you know physically for a man to be dead and buried but in these three realms also it is possible to tap into the power of resurrection it is possible to encounter the power of resurrection it is possible to engage the power of resurrection to play these three significant roles in our lives in the three dimensions of our existence so in the realm of the spirit a man can come back to life from the state of deadness in the realm of the spirit a man can be brought out of grave out of limitation out of barrier out of enclosure and be brought back you know to to, to life and in the realm of the spirit a man can soar up against the force of gravity of life that can happen in the realm of the soul and that can happen in the body also and so in this series i want to begin to teach how we can tap into the power of resurrection in the three dimensions of our existence now matthew chapter 28 27 matthew chapter 27 from verse 52 to verse 53 matthew 27 52 to 53 says and the graves were opened and many bodies of the saints which slept at arose and came out of the grave after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many now this is a, a, a report of an incident that happened when jesus resurrected those who slept saints who slept you know in the kingdom of god anybody who dies is considered to have slept why because if you sleep you will wake up again and because there's hope of resurrection anybody who is dead will rise again that's why it is called sleep in the kingdom of god so what happened at resurrection is that the moment jesus resurrected and the bible calls him the first fruit among the brethren that resurrects the moment he, re he resurrected all the saints that slept that has relationship with the kingdom of god they also resurrected out of their graves wherever their graves were they resurrected out of grave which means what happened to jesus also happened to them number one they came back to life from deadness number two they came out of the grave and of course we know that eventually they 
the third you know, um, element of the power for res resurrection you know, took place in their life because they are in heaven now with Christ. So it is possible, therefore, that anyone who is in relationship with Christ, anyone who is connected to Jesus, it is possible for that person to experience these three dimensions of the power of resurrection. In other words, that anyone who has relationship with Jesus, no matter what is dead in your life, your spirit, soul, or in your body, it can come back to life. Number two, whatever is alive in your spirit, soul, and body, but barricaded, limited, you know, restricted, bound, covered in any form, in any shape, can be brought out of that captivity. And number three, anyone who is related, connected to Jesus Christ can rise up against the force of gravity of life. Listen to me, there is a force of gravity in life that is keeping people down from succeeding, keeping people down from fulfilling destiny, keeping people down from making a headway in life. You know, at times the Spirit of the Lord will want to bring the reality of it to you, and at times in the sleep, in your sleep, you will notice that something has come to press you down. If you have never experienced that before, give glory to God. It's a matter of, of fact, you will have that experience. That in your, it's a matter of time, you will have that experience. In your sleep, while you are asleep, you will notice that some force came to press you down and you are trying to come out. You are trying to stand up. You are even trying to talk. You are not able to talk until, you know, you, there's divine intervention. Maybe you're able to shout the name of Jesus or something like that is to give us a glimpse into what is possible in the realm of the spirit. In the realm of the, of the spirit, there is a force of gravity that keeps a person down. Even, you know, economically, there are some economic force of gravity that keeps people down. There are some political, you know, force of gravity that keeps people down. You know, GDP of a nation, for instance, you know, poverty level of a nation, you know, a literacy level of a nation. There are so many forces of life, you know, that can keep a man down from rising. Lack of knowledge, lack of understanding, lack of education, or even physical ability, inability to physically do certain things can keep a man down, you know, from rising in his field of endeavor. So, but we can see in Matthew 27, 52 to 53, that some saints that slept in the Lord they contacted the power of resurrection the moment Jesus resurrected. So you can contact it too. It is possible for you and I to contact it. The condition, you know, or the, the qualification that we, we see in this scripture is that they were saints. They were saints. That's the qualification. And I want to say to you that you and I, we are saints of our time. What does it mean to be a saint? A saint is somebody that is sanctified, sanctified, somebody that is, you know, uh, that is, you know, living in, in righteousness, that is enjoy, you know, uh, relationship with God, communionship and, and fellowship with God. And that's exactly the price that Jesus came to pay for you and I. First Corinthians chapter one, verse two. First Corinthians chapter one, verse two. He said, unto the church of God, which is at, at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints. To them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints. So if you are born again and you have relationship with Christ, you are a saint, sanctified by Jesus Christ, called to be a saint. We cannot be of our own, you know, attain that, that status. But that is what Jesus you know, came to do for us. That is the identity he came to give you an eye. That you, all you need is to establish a relationship with Jesus, have him as your Lord and Savior, you know, and then you are sanctified by his blood and you are saints. You are a saint in the, in the, in, you know, in, in the scheme of things in the realm of the spirit. And it is the saints that slept 
in the Lord that contacted the power of resurrection when Jesus resurrected. And by the reason of the shedding of the blood of, of Jesus on the cross of Calvary, you and I with attained that status of a saint here. You know, so Paul was talking about addressing the church in Corinth. He said they, they are the people that are sanctified, you know, you know, in Christ Jesus, and they are called to be saints. Another scripture is Hebrew chapter 10, verse 10. Hebrew chapter 10 by 10, uh, verse 10, he said, by the which will, by the which will we are sanctified, you know, thank God for Jim, King James English, <laughs> by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the blood of Jesus Christ once and for all. The blood of Jesus is the, is the blood that sanctified you and I, and that is why you and I can boldly say we are saints of the kingdom today. Glory be to God. Another scripture, Hebrews 13, 12. Hebrews 13, 12. He said, Wherefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. So the reason why he suffered, endured the cross, is so that he might sanctify you and I. And so Paul said, all those who are sanctified by the blood of Jesus, they are called to be saints. So you and I, if you have relationship with Jesus, you have, your, have him as your Lord and Savior, you are saint, and therefore you are qualified to and to encounter the same power of resurrection that brought Jesus out of the grave and the same power of resurrection that brought the saints in, in, in Jerusalem out of the grave. That's good news for you and I. So in your spirit, in your soul, and in your body, you can experience the power of resurrection. And if you will stir up your faith with me this morning, you will have the same experience that the saints of old had you will have it right now and right where you are i just want to invite everyone listening to me or hearing me and you are not born again you don't have jesus as your lord and savior you are not qualified to encounter this power that we're about to pray for if you are like that i will encourage you you know to give your life to christ accept him as your lord and savior and you can chat you know on 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 on, on the on the on zoom now or whatever platform you are watching from just chat i want to have this relationship with christ and somebody online will get in touch with you you know instantly to lead you through you know uh, uh that process so that by the time we begin to pray uh you will not be insulated from that power you know because you don't have a relationship with the lord jesus so these three stages that i shared at the beginning of my message rising from deadness to life that was the first thing that happened in the grave jesus had to come from the position of deadness to the position of life and then now he need now to come out of the grave you know to 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 to, to the outside wall and then he now need to rise up to the father against the force of gravity and at these three stages you need the power to rise to help you there is no man on his on her own that is dead that can raise himself back to life and there's no man that is in the grave still with big stone watched over by a soldier that can bring himself out of that grave and there's no man that is alive here on earth that can rise against gravity and ascend to heaven and grow in life so these three stages of rising requires the power to rise and, I want to pray. and in these three stages can happen in your spirit in your soul and in your body you know in your spirit you can be dead and buried you know you need to come back to life in your spirit you need to come out of the grave in your spirit and you need to be able to you know ascend you know up in your in your spirit it can it, you know rising out of the grave can also happen in the spirit, in the soul, and in the body. The same thing, rising up against gravity, can happen in the spirit, in the soul, and in the body. So this three level of rising can take place in your spirit, soul, and body. And you are qualified for that encounter by the reason of the sanctification of the blood of Jesus that has made you and I a saint, like Paul rightly said. And so, in area of your spiritual resurrection, for instance, you know, your prayer life can be dead and buried. You know, our word study life 
can be dead and buried. Our spiritual senses can be dead and buried. Our purpose and destiny in life can be dead and buried. The gift of the Spirit in us can be dead and buried. Maybe some of you watching me now, you can, you can identify with what, what I'm saying, that your prayer and fasting life is not what it used to be. It's as if it is dead and buried. Uh, your, the way you study the Word of God and get revelation and enjoy it is no longer the same. It's as if it is dead and buried. Your spiritual senses to see in the realm of spirit, to hear God, to understand what God is doing, your purpose and destiny, what you are created for, what you are born to achieve on earth, the manifestation of the gift of the Spirit in your life, maybe it is dead and buried, you no longer feel anything like that. Now this morning, I want to believe God for the power of resurrection to come upon your spirit, spiritual life, bring it back to life, bring it out of the grave, and cause it to begin to rise to higher heights. Also in your soul, you know, the realm of knowledge. Some, some of us, our, our knowledge, you know, base has, is dead and buried. You know, understanding, wisdom, the love of God in our heart, or even the fruit of the Spirit. Some of these things, in so, so many people, in so one or two of these, or in these areas, we, you know, we, we discovered there's decline. You know, things are dying, things are going off. We don't remember as we used to remember things. We don't understand as we used to understand. We, we're, we're running out of wisdom. We start behaving foolishly. The, the love of God is dissipating out of our heart. The fruit of the Spirit is dissipating. We get angry very easily. We, you know, keep malice. We do things that we're not supposed to do. These are signs, you know, of deadness in the soul. These are signs of grave experience in the soul. The power of resurrection will come upon you and bring you out of that experience. Even in the physical, you know, our body systems, you know, some of the systems of our body is dying or dead or buried. Some parts of the body is not working. Things are not going the way they should, they should go right now. You know, your family, you know, your marriage, your relationship, your husband, your wife, your children, is not the way it's supposed to be. These are physical, you know, signs of deadness. Your career is not going the way it should go. Your business is going down, you know, especially with this COVID-19. You know, the, the world of so many of us is turned upside down. You know, empire that has been built over the years is dead and buried. You know, wealth is dead, dead and buried. In different areas like that where we maybe we're experiencing deadness or in position, you know, experiencing grave experience you know the power of resurrection is available this morning you know let me let me just share a case study with you before you before we pray for you to know that what we are sharing this morning you know is real there was a story in ezekiel chapter 37 ezekiel chapter 37 verse 1 and verse 2 the bible says the hand of the lord was upon ezekiel and he carried ezekiel out in the spirit and set him down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones dry bone and he caused Ezekiel to pass by this bones roundabout. Ezekiel said, behold, they were very many in the open valley and lo, they were very dry. This was a scenario of people that died and buried, the, the body has decomposed, the bone were very dry. That's the description of Ezekiel. And of course, you know the rest of the story. I'm not going to bother you with the rest of the story because you are familiar with it. What happened was that God now told Ezekiel prophesy on these bones and as Ezekiel prophesied on the bones, the bones came together. You know, flesh came upon it, tendon came upon it, skin came upon it. He said, but there was no life. And God told Ezekiel prophesy again. And he prophesied. The Bible says that life came upon them and there arose a great army a great army came out of the valley of dry bone but this is the interesting part in verse 11 and uh, and also verse 12 of that scripture look at what god said to ezekiel he said then he said unto me son of man these bones are the whole house of israel behold they say our bones are dried and our hope is lost we are cut off for our past therefore prophesy and say unto them thus said the lord God, behold, all oh my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your grave and bring you into the land of Israel. So, so God was showing Ezekiel the, the state of the children of Israel in the realm of the spirit. And the children of Israel, they were alive. They were alive doing normal activities, you know, you know marrying, having children, eating and and, and dining and rejoicing and doing, they were just living their normal life. They did not know that in the realm of the spirit, they were not only dead, they were buried and they were decayed and they were already 
dry bones. So it is possible for a man to be alive, you know, moving around as normal human being, whereas in the realm of the spirit, he could, he could be dead, he could be buried, he could just be a dry bone in the realm of the spirit. So God told Ezekiel, what I showed you now is the children of Israel. Go and tell the children of Israel that I'm going to open their grave and bring them out and establish them in the land of Israel. That is what the power of resurrection can do. A lot of marriages are dead and buried and they are dry bone already. A lot of businesses and careers, they are dead and buried and they are dry bone already. A lot of destiny and purpose of people on earth, they are dead and buried and they are dry bone. If there is no intervention of the power to rise in the realm of the spirit, you just discover that every effort in the physical will amount to nothing. So this morning, I want to pray with every one of us. You know, I want to share, I, I want to begin to share in this series, how do I access this power to rise? You know, there are five ways to access it. I will share one today and we'll pray. And then next Sunday, you know, in my part two, I will share the second and the third and Sunday following next in the part three of this series, I will share the fourth and the fifth way uh, to contact the power to rise. So the first way to contact it, which is what I'm going to share today and will pray, is supernatural encounter. In this, you know, supernatural encounter, you really don't do, you are not the one responsible for it happening. It is just by the sheer mercy of God. You know the story of the man by the pool of, you know, Bethesda, he was not even expecting any Jesus from anywhere. He was not, you know, looking forward to anything. He was just there waiting for an opportunity for the pool to be stirred up again so that, you know, he would get into it with the help of a man. But God located him. God located him and gave him a supernatural encounter, gave him a power to rise that he could not give himself. Power to rise that no man could give to him. God visited him with that power and his story changed. Look at the man, you know, uh, <clears throat> the, the madman of gathering. Nobody could help him. The Bible says when they tie him, he will break off loose. He was cutting himself with stone and, 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 and you, know, you, know, you know, things that can injure him. But Jesus went to him. He did not pray. He, didn't, he was not looking for Jesus. I, I doubt if he knows that Jesus even existed. But Jesus went to him and Jesus set him free. The woman by the, by the well in Samaria was also there trying to, you know, you know uh, fetch water. He was not looking for Jesus. Jesus went there to meet her. In fact, she was arguing with Jesus. But Jesus, you know, gave her the power to rise above her situation and circumstances. There was a man who was in synagogue. Well, he was looking for Jesus, but he did not even pray that his hand would be healed. But Jesus spoke to him. There was a woman bound by the devil you know, for 18 years or 28 years or something like that, you know, 38, 38 years, I believe, you know, but Jesus visited her also with the power to, the, the Bible says that that woman was bound for 38 years and could by no means lift herself up. That's exactly how the scripture put it. He was bound for 38 years and he could by no means, by no means on her own accord, you know, pull herself up. But Jesus visited her and gave her the ability to rise and lifted her up. So I want you to, you know, at this point, I want you to lift up your voice and just call upon the same Jesus you know, that visited these people supernaturally, and he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. I want you to call upon him to supernaturally visit you with the power to rise in the realm of the spirit, in your soul, in your physical. Ask Jesus to give you a supernatural visitation this morning for, with the ability to rise in everywhere you are not, you cannot by any means lift yourself up in the spirit, in the soul and in the body. The first way to access that power is by asking for it by mercy. That Jesus will just look down on me and visit me with that power by mercy and lift me up out of deadness 
to life and bring me out of grave, you know, to real life and cause me to soar up high in life supernaturally in a way that cannot be explained by any man. I want you to open your mouth and pray. I'm giving you one more minute to just ask Jesus to give you this divine visitation he gave to these people I mentioned. I gave you several examples where Jesus visited people, you know, visited them, you know, by mercy and gave them a divine encounter and lifted them out of deadness, lifted them out of the grave and caused them to soar up in uh, soar up high in life. Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever and he can do the same if you ask him for it. Lord by mercy I ask in the name of Jesus that you will visit me with the power of resurrection, the power to rise against the vices of the enemy, where I cannot help myself in the realm of the spirit, in my soul, in my body. I ask that you will visit me this morning with the power to rise and cause me to rise up from dead to, to dead. Cause me to rise up out of the, the plan of the enemy. Me to store up against the force of gravity, every force of gravity of life that is keeping me down below, every gravity of life, political force, economic or social force, be it you know the plan of the enemy, whatever the circumstances that will be keeping me down, Lord, I ask that against such force of gravity, you will cause me to soar up high in my destiny, in life, in my purpose, in my business, in my career, in my body, in my soul, in my spirit, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the ability to supernaturally rise, oh God, release over me in the name of Jesus Christ. Begin to round up your prayers now begin to bring your prayers to a close as i will uh pray for you know every every one of us and uh, uh and i want you to stir up your your faith even as i begin to to pray for everyone uh, at this point you know so i want to pray for everyone at this point i want you to stir up your faith to receive. Uh, I will share that in some other Sundays because one of the ways to access that power is through, you know, a vessel, a vessel of God. I want to pray for you. Uh, before I pray, if you are here and you are watching or you are listening and you don't have, you know, Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want you to do that right now and invite Jesus, you know, into your life and ask him to be the Lord and Savior of your life. Ask him for the forgiveness of your sins. You know, uh, tell him to write your name in the book of life. Tell him that you serve him for the rest of your life. You will not serve sin anymore. And, 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 and let, you, let your life be, be, be enlisted in, in, the, in the book of life. Let your name be written among those who qualify, you know, to encounter this power. So that the whole exercise and the prayer will not be in vain. On, uh, on your life and um, if you do that I wanted to chat you know I, I, I did that and then we'll uh, get in touch with you uh, shortly thereafter so let's pray Father in the name of Jesus we thank you we thank you we thank you we thank you Jesus the son of the living God we appreciate you we glorify you we magnify you thank you for who you are thank you for the sacrifice you made on our behalf we know that the Bible says you are the firstborn among the brethren that resurrected. And we can see in the scripture that when you resurrected, saints in Jerusalem resurrected also. And Apostle Paul made it clear to us that by the shedding of your blood on the cross of Calvary, you sanctify each and every one of us and you have called us to be saints of God in the kingdom. I therefore, on the basis of these scriptures, on the basis of this, you know, analysis of what has happened before, what you have done, I therefore establish, oh God, in Zion today, before the judge of all, before the innumerable company of angels, before the spirit of just men made perfect, before the 
the, the, the advocate and the mediator of the New Testament, Jesus. And before the blood of the sprinkling that speaketh better thing than the blood of Abel, which is the blood that sanctify us and qualify us to be saints of God in this kingdom. Before these witnesses, before this jury, before the advocate and, and, and the chief witness, I therefore declare before the judge of all, which is God Almighty, that everyone that has prayed for an encounter of the power of resurrection this morning in our spirit, in our soul, in our body, let us experience the power of resurrection in the name of Jesus. Lord, the judge of all, release the power of resurrection afresh to bring everybody out of deadness to life, to bring everybody out of grave back to life, and to cause everybody to begin to soar up in life against the force of gravity of life in the name of Jesus. I thank you, the God of heaven and earth, for I know that you exalt your word above your names. Grasses may wither, flower may drop, but your word will never go unfulfilled. Your promises, they are, sh they are yea and they are amen. And you said, if you pray according to your will, you hear it us. Jesus, you said, whatever we ask in the name of Jesus, you will do it. We have asked that every one of us will have an encounter with the power of resurrection today, and we ask it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Mm -hmm. Amen and amen and amen and amen. All right.